Oh man, I love this song. Every time I hear it, I can remember where I was and who I was with. It reminds me of this. Does this sound familiar? Music is like a scent. It can instantly transport you to another time and place. I ask my guests to dish about their song with the memories that go with it. I'm your host, Tiffany Mason. I have a passion for music and a curiosity about how a song affects someone and why. Turn up your radio and let's explore Memories with a Beat. Hello, Podcast Land. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Memories with a Beat. And today it's a little bit different. I have two co hosts, you guys. Two people wanted to talk to me at the same time. <laughs> I have two gentlemen. I have Kyle Wiltshire and I have Jay Watson. Welcome to Memories with a Beat, guys. Thank you so much for having us. We're excited to be here. Yeah, it's going to be great. I loved our conversation where Jay and I were going back and forth and I was like, oh, so do you guys want to like go separate? And you were like, eh, I think we'd really rather go together. And I was like, but, you know, for these reasons, maybe separate is better. And you're like, no, I think we really want to go together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're, we're, we're a team, you know, we like to we like to stay together. Yeah. Well, looking at your bio, it looks like you guys have spent a lot of time together. So I imagine that you guys were hanging out, listening to the song. And you guys, if you don't know the song One Week by Bare Naked Ladies, you're going to get to know more about it. And if you want to hear it, of course, it's always going to be on the playlist in Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. So let's get into it, guys. How do both of you connect to One Week? Jay, you can go ahead and start us off and just let me know, you know, the memories that you have with the song. Yeah. So Kyle and I met in college. He is a year younger than me. You know, he graduated in 2000. I graduated in 99. And so in 1998, when the song came out, we were, we were the upperclassmen. We were kind of the very small big dogs on campus and we were happy about everything. It was just a great time to be alive. We were, you know, it's that time in your life when you're starting to figure out what you want to do and who you want to be. And so there's some just uh, energy that's there that you don't really think about in the moment, but afterwards you look back and go, Oh, that's what, confidence looked like. That's what excitement looked like. That's what hope looked like. At that particular season, the college we went to, it had a four people in one dorm room. It was a, everybody had their own individual kind of bedrooms. And for whatever reason, something happened. And Kyle probably knows exactly what happened because he's a detail guy. Something <laughs> happened and somebody went into the room and blasted on their speakers, this song. And Everybody in the room started dancing and singing, and it was the most ridiculous thing. And so we proceeded from that moment up until today, that's our song. Like, that is our song. When we hear it, people take pictures of it. We, you know, driving down the road, people do all these things. Like, it's it's our song. You, we hear it, and it's like, okay, back to 98 right now. <laughs> so Jay and Kyle are synonymous with one week. Got it. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that is um, like the dorm that my son has right now. I have a 23 year old son and he has four like bedrooms and then the common space. So I can imagine that. Now, Kyle, he said, maybe, you know. So tell us, do you know why that song was blared and whose room was it blared from or was it in the common space? I, I don't remember all the details as to, you know, what you know what caused that song the bare naked ladies at that I, I, time i think it was john carroll i think johnny cat was the one who brought yeah, it in i think it was our friend john at that season the bare naked ladies were sort of omnipresent you know like in, in that late 90s they were everywhere mm -hmm. and you know i don't know that they're necessarily a uh one hit wonder they're like a one album wonder i think you know it's like <laughs> that's it's, fair it's like they have, i know they have a big following and they had you know they were big before and they were you know had some things after and everything but like that one album was just everywhere you know and and our friend john like jay mentioned was a big fan and just something about the energy of that song you know we we were we were also in the same fraternity and um that was, you know, it was the fall of 98. So that was when rush happened. So we're, you know, we're trying to talk people into joining our group and, you know, and so <laughs> somebody would come in and be like, Hey, Patrick feathers just decided he's going to go SAE with us. And we were like, turn it on one week. And we just, you know, oh. <laughs> we'd all start dancing and, you know, and, and, and clapping and laughing. And it just, it kind of became our anthem. Yeah. I mean, I, we may get to this. I don't have any idea what the song's about, you know, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> um, really for real. I mean, I've never really thought about it, analyzed it. I just like the way wow. it sounds. And more than that, I like the way it makes me feel, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's 
that's super interesting because lots of times towards the end of the episode, I will ask people, and we can skip to it now, I suppose, too, is when you used to buy CDs or cassettes, would you pull out the leaflet and would you read it? Or were you just dying to devour the music? And it feels like maybe today we have one of each of those. I think that Kyle... You're going to find out here in a second that Kyle is a, a rabid fan of very few things, but the things that he loves, that man loves. And so I would mm-hmm. venture to say he's probably got mm-hmm. a different answer for, for different things. <laughs> but for this situation, yeah, he's about the music and how it makes him feel. For me, I, I am a giant consumer of all things music and I love it and I love everything about it. So when I was buying mm-hmm. CDs, absolutely. I would take it out. I would read it. I would put it in my big giant CD Bible that carried around in the car and <laughs> yeah. I would have it and go back and look for if I missed something, if they had lyrics or didn't have lyrics, that was always a big deal because it wasn't like you could just Google or go on, you know, music genius or something like that. You had to, you had to either figure it out. And half the time we missed the lyrics and it's not till you go back now and you, 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 you go on genius and you put it in. You're like, they're saying what? Oh, there's a couple of songs when they come on the radio. I'm like, God, I always want to know what they're saying right here. And now I can finally pull it up and figure it out because I didn't obviously own the CD or the cassette. Sometimes I wish it was still like that. So I have a daughter who's 12. And when she listens to music, I'm like, God, I wish she just didn't know some of the words. <laughs> but she has seen me dig into the words. Yeah. So, of course, she wants to know, what are they saying? Yeah. What is the story? Because she, she knows that my podcast yeah. is about, you know diving into songs and what do these songs mean and what do the the words mean and so you know unfortunately they they watch us and they want to imitate us and that's where we are with lyrics at this house <laughs> yeah as, as parents it's more caught than taught right it's what they catch versus what what we teach them yeah <laughs> absolutely absolutely Kyle so you must have children i do yeah i have 3 kids 15 13 and 10 okay okay so same yeah. thing and what about you jay I have twin daughters. Oh, they are 18, yuffie. and they are looking to figure out where they're going to go to school in the fall. They've got a couple choices, and they're getting close. One of them wants to be a giant scientist nerd, like an astrobiologist. I, wow. I think that's somebody that looks for aliens or something. I don't know exactly what it is. <laughs> and then the other one is a singer-songwriter. And so they're very different, but they are best buddies and, and lovers of music as well. Yeah, awesome. I love that. I love sharing that common passion with my daughter. So I can only imagine that you guys love sharing that with your children as well. Okay, so there were four guys in the room when the song goes off. Now, how is it that it just became you two's song? Oh no no! It's okay. It's all five. Oh uh, okay. We had we have five guys and uh, got it. Kyle Kyle was always the guy in college who never lived in the room but was always in that room. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And so, and you know, you're younger. Most of the guys in that room with me were all my age, and uh, so Kyle Kyle would come in and he was very much. I think he may have sat on the couch in that room more than I did. Like I think. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and. Uh, it became kind of our song to the point where two years ago, uh, one of our buddies got, got married mm. and I snuck up to the DJ and said, Hey, you got to play this. And he's like, what? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and when we, we, we played it, you know, you got to see a bunch of old dudes all getting around in a circle <laughs> dancing like it was 1998. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. So you guys, when, sorry, keep going back to the, the story. Obviously that's why we're here. So of course that makes sense. But um, I'm just trying to get a better picture of this, 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 is it nighttime? Is it morning? Have you guys been out drinking? Um, like what, what is the, the baseline here? I, I think the answer is just yes, Kyle, right? It's just yes. Yeah. I, I mean, other than the drinking, we were pretty clean cut uh, back then. It was any time of day. There was no rhyme or reason. Now, you know, in college, you tend to find, you know, the, the wee hours of the morning a little more. Uh, sorry if you can hear the, uh, the, the fire t- truck or whatever passing. Are you playing? Are you playing one week too loud right now in your day? It might be. I may be <laughs> violating noise ordinance or something here yeah, in the neighborhood. Yeah. But uh, but it, it could be one in the morning. It could be nine in the morning. You know, it, mm. it just it was any time we wanted to celebrate something. You know, if we were in a funk, we were you know like man, I need I need to feel good. I need some some endorphins. We don't would say it that way. We, that's why we think about it now course. that we're old. Yeah. But you yeah. know, like we need a burst of something. You know, yeah, just just turn it on, and you know, and that'll now, that'll that'll get us right. There was very much so uh, because it was in the dorm, and it was like just us. Often somebody in the room would do something shocking when the song started. So there was <laughs> there was oftentimes where somebody would walk out wearing less than they should be wearing, and. Uh, <laughs> 
it was always a shock. And then there was always ridiculous dance moves you wouldn't do anywhere else. And, and it was just, it, it really was, it was pure unbridled, just ridiculous joy. Yeah. I wonder sure. if it was risky business inspired. <laughs> the coming like, up. Uh, Tupac and risky business together, I guess would be what it was. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there were other songs that tried to fill, you know take this place yeah. of the you know like you know we would we would play something else but just nothing else could could top one week and you know it's one of those songs where you know you just you mumble along and the song the words you know you just you know, chickeny china the chinese chicken you know that's if that's the only thing you know from the song you sing that part with all your heart you know <laughs> but uh yes. yeah it was it was just it was just well, a, a okay, lot of let's, fun chickeny china the chinese chicken you have a drumstick and your brain starts sticking watching x files when the lights on and then i don't know what the dollar mains on yeah. is the smoky man no, in this one like harrison ford <laughs> i'm getting frantic next thing i'm tantric <laughs> next thing I'm, but like he says so much so fast like you know. I almost wonder if the song wasn't really trying to say anything. <laughs> no, well. Oh, wait. Wait, yeah. Jay, you said you dug into it or something, right? Oh, yeah. The actual okay. chorus is amazing. Okay. And so I don't really know what the verses per se are about. But, the, you know, the whole song is basically about two lovers that argue all the time and hate each other's guts. And he it's rolling through the process of what it's like to be in a relationship where – you're not talking, you're not looking at each other. And by the end of one week, you've completely forgot what you're arguing about and tomorrow's going to be fine. I mean, that's basically what the song is kind of laying out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I can see that. And then maybe like all the fast mumbo jumbo in the middle, maybe that's kind of the week flying by. Yeah. Then, or maybe things yeah. that they actually argued about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you think that they, um, they argued about having a drumstick and their brain started ticking? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, those guys, are, I mean, I don't know. Do you remember if I had a million dollars? Do you remember some other songs that they had? They were okay. very uh, avant-garde. They were, yes. you know, they were a little all over the place. Yes. And I'm so glad you brought that up because that is probably my second most favorite. So a few facts about this song is that, well, first of all, they're a Canadian band. Um, and this came off of their album Stunt. And, and I think, Kyle, you were saying kind of a one album hit wonder and i know jay you made a face when he said that so yeah that upsets me kyle like on a spiritual level <laughs> i saw you were a little disturbed um but i do know where kyle's coming from so i do agree it was like every song on the album was so good and then the next ones they were good and then they changed their style a little bit but it just never rivaled you know these or this one the stunt one and that one came out in 1998 and little fun fact, that's the year I graduated. So I very clearly remember this song. I remember my car. I remember Windows Down. I remember that summer, like, you know, all the things. They have a couple of other songs, though, and I don't know if my audience maybe knows these better or in combination. Um, it's all been done. Pinch Me, mm -hmm. The Old Apartment, mm -hmm. and If I Had a Million Dollars. Well, you can't forget also that they have one of the biggest theme songs on TV in the last 40 years. What is that? They're the theme song for uh, Sheldon Cooper, The Geniuses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory. They did. That's their song. They did yeah. that. I didn't know that. Oh. Okay. Probably their biggest hit. <laughs> <laughs> probably most heard, you know? Yeah, yeah, probably most heard. Got a podcast? Are you loving it, but not loving how much time post-production takes? Or maybe you just have other tasks calling your name a little bit louder. Virtually You can help. Check out virtuallyuva.com, supporting you in all things podcasting, like editing, show notes, audiograms, and much more. See the link in the show notes. They're waiting to give you back your time. And on that note, let's get back to the show. This one did hit number one the week that it was released or whatever on the Billboard Hot 100. So, yeah, it was. I mean, it got its notoriety. It was omnipresent. Kyle's right. I mean, you couldn't couldn't escape it in fall of '98. 
couldn't escape it. Well, I think that feeling that you guys are saying that you get from it is a feeling a lot of people get from it. It's just a feel good song. It's so silly. And I do love like all the fast parts where you're trying to say it with them. And then finally, you know, you, your brain gives up and you just, it's <laughs> laughable, right? Cause you just can't keep up with the song. You know, I, I think one of the <laughs> things that, that drew us to it as well, and we've, we've alluded to this, but the line about, I have a history of losing my shirt. We were very fond of losing our shirts <laughs> at that uh, phase in life. I, I, uh, I, I cling to my shirt tight these days but back in those days I, I would have no problem losing my shirt so uh you know that I think that was another joyful experience with that song well and, and <laughs> yeah you know the kind of guy who laughs at a funeral that was kind of us like we weren't we weren't dishonorable you know in that way but I mean at the same time it's like you you go somewhere and I can find funny in anything and sometimes that's how I cope that's how <laughs> I that's how I survive and uh you know that yep. kind of line there and then the line that says uh I have a tendency to wear my mind on my sleeve and I have a history of taking off my shirt. Like, I just thought that was hilarious. And like, it, it starts with losing my shirt then it's taking off my shirt. It goes all over the place with it. And there's just enough little lines there. I mean, even the part where they go, I don't really know what we're fighting about a couple of days in, I realized that it was my fault, but I'm never going to say that. Like, there's just enough in there yeah. that is, feels real, feels right, even though it's nonsense as well. <laughs> yeah i agree because an argument between a couple <laughs> you never know what the other person is adding to the argument yeah. right like it's never about you know having a drumstick and your brain starts sticking it's never about that <laughs> it's always about something else that's for sure entirely okay now tell me the evolution of this song so the first thing you guys remember is because it sounds like it has grown up with you guys or you know, evolved with you. So is it something where like you're dancing around with your kids now, your wife is completely in on it. Is it like at that wedding, like all five couples come in and you're all just shouting the words at each other. You know, like what are some of the other memories that kind of come up with this other than that initial one that started it all? What do you think, Kyle? You know, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of still just our thing, you know? Yeah. Um, the, and, and like Jay said, there were five of us that sort of you know, the four guys lived in the room. I lived on the couch, um, <laughs> you know, and come hung out all the time, but it was just sort of our thing. And people know us by that, you know, some of our college friends and, you know, so there's just an association, but it is something that has remained just ours. And it's not an inside joke. That's not the, you know, cause there really is no joke, right? but it's just sort of like, we own it, you know? And, <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and, and like our our kids, I don't even know my kids have ever even heard the song, you know. Kyle. Um, Kyle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, there's not a this whole lot of This may be the variety. end of our partnership today. What have you done to us, Tiffany? <laughs> <laughs> I'm exposing all the deepest crevices of Kyle's secrets. You are. Oh, gosh. I am confident. No. I am confident that Hannah Chase and Hope could sing the majority of this song. Wow. Okay. Okay. Now you guys are friends. You've been friends for a very long time and you love the song one week. You didn't start a podcast about it. You didn't write a book about it, but you did write a book about something else. And I really want to touch on that a little bit. So Kyle, if you can kind of introduce the book to me, you know, where it got started, where you guys came up with the idea, why are you writing it together? Why are you not writing it separate? Although you like to do things together. So it makes sense too. Yeah. Yeah. So our, thank you. Well, our book is called the dead rock stars. It is a fun fictional kind of alternate history. Um, it's set in 1999 and this, the basic story, the basic premise of the story is this. What if many of your favorite rock stars, real life rock stars, Elvis Presley, John Lennon, Kurt Cobain, what if many of your favorite rock stars who tragically passed too soon, what if they didn't? What if they didn't die? They actually faked their deaths and now they're secret agents protecting the world. So it's kind of a crazy outlandish premise, but we've had so much fun, you know, creating this world and writing this book and, and getting it out and telling everybody about it. So that is, uh, yeah, I'll let Jake answer the second half about like, you know, why we wrote it together, those sort of things, because there's there's good stuff there too. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, Jay. Kyle and I have a history of talking about this a little bit and it goes back to maybe the first day we met or the second time we met or something like that. But Kyle is more introverted. Kyle is more thoughtful. He has universes <laughs> and worlds rolling around in his brain. Yes. And it, if I had left him alone in, in the fall of 96, he might still be in that room today. Like he might just still be in that room. And so Very possible. Kyle tells a story where he basically <laughs> says, I didn't say this word for word, but, but he felt the, it was like, Hey, Hey Kyle, 
you and I are going to be friends. Come outside. We're going to go do something. And so that's kind of how it started. Well, well, <laughs> fast forward, Kyle and I talked just about every day <clears throat> from work commuting. And we talk about all kinds of things. We never talked about our family. Mm-hmm. We never talked about our wives or our children. We talked about whatever movie we watched, whatever ridiculous, you know, TV show we mm-hmm. were into. And we'd always kind of pick them apart. We, we think, talk about what we loved. We talk about what frustrated us. And we kept going to that place of, you know, if they only would have done X. And then you say that famous thing, you say, we could do so much better. And uh, uh-huh. one day we were driving, Kyle had this idea and he pitched the dead rock stars. And I said, Kyle, I don't think that's, I think that's a brilliant idea. I think that's a universe. I think that's something that we could do that. Uh, I think I said, it's something that, that you could do that is, could be a, a worldwide everything. It could be mm-hmm. amazing. It could be a series. It could be all these things. Yeah. And I'm getting excited about it. And Kyle's like, yeah, yeah, that sounds nice. And, and so we went a couple <laughs> of uh, weeks and, I, I couldn't get it out of my head. And so mm-hmm. really what we wanted to do is we wanted to write a movie. We wanted to make a movie, but we don't know how to write a movie. So we went with the thing that we thought we could do the best with, which was just a book. And I came to Kyle and said, hey, Kyle, I would like to try this with you. And to start it off, why don't you let me write a couple chapters? You see what you think. And if you like it, you write a couple chapters and we'll just go until we get tired of it Ah. or until, you know, we decide it's not a thing or if we get really excited about it, we'll make a plan. And so we kind of started and we did it together. And it was one of the best choices I think we've made uh, as far as those kind of things, because we are different in the ways that I mentioned earlier. And that helps us to tell a story. You know, this story's mm-hmm. got action. This story's got dialogue. It's got romance. It's got all these things. And so because of that, to have both of us to make sure we're filling in those plot holes and we're, we're filling in the story, we were able to get a fully realized story and we're really, really proud of it. That is amazing. Now, I was reading, it just came out in November, right? That's right. Yeah. It, November yeah. 14th. So, you know, just still pretty hot off the presses. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm going to be a little cheesy on November 21st. Did you play this song? Oh man. <laughs> it's been <laughs> We should have. Week. Oh gosh. Why didn't we? Oh, we should have. Why Come didn't on, we? You missed a golden opportunity. <laughs> we <laughs> really did. We did. <laughs> so this is really interesting to me that you guys are really good friends and I sometimes feel like college friends Sometimes they incorporate their families, but I feel like college friends, for some reason, tend to be friends with just the college people. I feel like a lot of times they don't pull their families in. So it's just all those unique experiences, all of that finding identity, all of the just memories that are made during that time, that critical time of, you know, finding your freedom and finding what works and what doesn't work and systems that you appreciate, you know, and how you're going to get your work done, but also still have fun and also make money and just all those things. That's really amazing to me. And I'm, I'm so jealous. I mean, I, I, I've been friends with my high school friend a long time, but I don't think I've been friends with like anybody for 20 years and still talk every day. That is incredible. You guys. Well, you know, I, I remember this from my freshman orientation, believe it or not. This was said at my freshman orientation. I still remember it. That college is the, pretty much the only time in your life when you live with your friends and go visit your family. Every other time in the, mm. in the rest of your life, you live with your family and you go visit your friends. And so that creates a, a unique bond, a unique experience. And it's one of those things oftentimes, you know, with, with our gang of college friends, when we try to explain it to anybody else, they're like, I don't get it. You're like, yeah, you just had to be there. You know? Right. And, and this one week thing is sort of like that. You know, it's like, you know. It we, does feel like that. We try to explain it, but you just kind of had to be there. <laughs> we also have a unique experience because from our fraternity, there's about 17 of us that are on a text thread that, that talk almost every day. And oh, wow. from that, um, we don't actually talk on the phone to everybody, but yeah, like yeah, we, yeah. we use this thread and ridiculous links or whatever somebody's upset about, or if somebody needs help, you know, it's, it's all kind of right there. And then on top of that, we try to do at least one trip a year. I don't know if we've done one in a while, but we try to do something simple and cheap where we all go for a couple of days and yeah. play wiffle ball or do something, you know, do nothing and sit around, play poker, whatever. And, uh, it is a unique thing and it's something that it, I value greatly. And it is, uh, it is purely just college guys. It's not 
It's not their families. Mm-hmm. It's not every, we're not, we're not inviting. There's not a father, uh, daughter trip or no. a father, son trip. And, yeah. and, and because a lot of it is uh, all of us live in different places. Like Kyle and I live in the same city. We live in Nashville, but Kyle lives in the North. I live in the South and it's an hour away. Mm-hmm. And so we don't really hang out with our families that much. We, we, and even yeah. when we hang out with each other, we're like, I don't know if I want to drive that far. <laughs> <laughs> It's sad, isn't it? I know. I had somebody move just 20 minutes away and I was like, mm, I don't know. I guess we're done. Maybe, yeah, maybe our paths will cross. I don't know. <laughs> well, I love that you guys love music so much. You're right by Nashville. I was so jealous when I looked that up. My son just moved to Clarksville, so he's close. Yeah. Yep. And so we, we drove through. We spent one night on Broadway, but I can't wait to go back and do more. Just some other... Make sure you have a pink cowboy hat. Get yourself a pink cowboy hat. Is that right? That's that's the ticket? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. I saw an interview, and Janice got to make her own cowboy hat. So there's a shop on Broadway where you can customize. You can pick the leather that goes around, the feathers, all the stuff. And I was like, ooh, that I'm all about some customization. So, (laughs) Well, if that's your thing, Nashville has a famous designer who makes like country star outfits. It's uh-huh. almost like if you think about Elvis Presley's uh, jumpsuit, yeah. you know, it's kind of like that, except they bedazzle the stew out of it and they mm. do all the special things. And it's, it's actually called a nudie suit in you, in you D I E. I'll be careful how you Google that. And uh, <laughs> you, you can, um, you can have a fully <clears throat> customizable outfit like Dolly Parton or like, uh, mm. you know, Jack White from the White Stripes. He, he Will has they put one. a lot of boob in there for me? They'll do just, I don't, <laughs> they'll do just about whatever you need. <laughs> I need a lot of boob put in for me. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> I guess you guys wouldn't know. Sorry. Well, is there anything else more that you want to add about this? I mean, I just get this feeling that this is just one of those songs. You almost can't put your finger on it, but it's just this brotherhood that you guys share and it comes on and it's feel good. And I mean, there's just not a ton more to throw at it. It's just that basic and that simple and that visceral. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where, you know, maybe you think back over your life, you know, like I, I hear, I hear beat it and I'm in 1983 again, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like you hear, you hear With your red uh, zipper jacket. Yeah. You hear Will Smith summertime, you know, and it's mm-hmm. 91 yeah. again, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah. For me, this is that song. It's like if I could associate any song with a season of my life, this is the song. You know, one week Mm -hmm. reminds me of college, reminds me of my four best friends in college, reminds me of the silly fun we had and the, you know, the carefree moments. You know, like I said, I don't really know anything. I would never really analyze or thought about the lyrics. It was more about how it makes me feel. And, you know, and sort of the memories it, it brings, it kind of makes me sad that it's a song about people fighting, you know, but I've never, I've never <laughs> thought about it because we didn't fight much. We were just goofing off and having a good time, you know? So yeah, it's just, it's just one of those like, you know, sensory songs where you can almost smell mm-hmm. what it smelled like when you hear it. You can taste what it yes. tasted like when you hear it, you know, those, those sort of things, all those connectivity, mm-hmm. you know, for the one song. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's what it, that's what it means to me and kind of uh, what it resonates in, in, in me. Yeah, that's so special. I would say that I think there are things about this song that make me think specifically about our group of people. Men in particular, maybe women too, I don't know. I don't have a lot of, you know, close women friends, but <laughs> and I'm not in those circles. But men in particular that I, I think, they love to make fun of each other. And one of the most yes. favorite things to do is to get someone mad. Like if you could get somebody riled up. It's like Christmas because you're going to just, you're going to watch them explode. And so when you, when, when I hear lines like, how can I help it? If I think of funny when you're mad, trying hard not to smile, uh, you know, that's, 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 this song is kind of us. We were ridiculous. We were absurd. Things would happen that, that, you know, would be totally yeah. random like this song. And at the same time, we were more interested in having fun than we were being serious. And so I, I kind of, uh, <laughs> I kind of pull that into it when I think about it. And, and, and really, um, it is, it's 1998. Like it is the song that I think about for the year. Kyle and I talked about, we started mentioning other songs like, is it glycerin from, uh, from Bush? Is Mm. it, you know, is it some of those songs that are in there? You, what did you say? What was another one you had Kyle? We were talking about this. Yes. 
Oh yeah. I mean, Dave Matthews was everywhere mm-hmm. in that at that season. You know, you couldn't yeah. you couldn't go two feet without yeah. him, Dave Matthews. You know, with like him or not. Um, yeah. So I mean, that, that's just some of those 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 songs that just kind of just really encapsulate the late nineties, and mm-hmm. you know, they were just. Yeah. Omnipresent songs. Yeah. Well, even I said that in the beginning too, you know, just, I can remember where I was. So it's, it is one of those songs and it was everywhere. You guys have been insanely fun to talk to. Uh, I wish I lived closer. I wish I knew you guys in real life. Cause I would definitely hang out with you guys, but unfortunately that's not the case. So I appreciate your time and thank you so much for coming on memories of the beat. Thank you, Tiffany, for having us. We had an awesome time chatting with yeah. you. We had a lot of fun. If you come to Nashville, we'll go get a nudie suit. Let's do it. Okay, <laughs> let's do it. I'm going to hold you to it. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, Podcast Land. Well, I hope this episode sticks with you like the memories to your favorite song. Podcast Land, thank you so much for listening. If you had a few memories of your own pop up with this episode, make sure to take a screenshot, tag me on social, Tiffany Mason, or virtually you, and share those memories. I know y'all are listening and I'd love to hear the memories you were reminded of with this song. Also, would you do me a favor and share this episode with someone you think would enjoy it? This is the best way you can help me to grow my audience. Can't wait to dive into my next guest's memories with a beat. Hit subscribe now. You don't want to miss the next episode.